Let's, in this video, analyze the impact a minimum price can have on a market. Uh, a minimum price is a price control set by the government, normally above the equilibrium, it could be below the equilibrium as well, but normally above the equilibrium price in the market, to either safeguard the incomes of producers or to ensure that workers in a, in a labor market gain a good enough wage to support a decent standard of living. So here is a little definition, so price fixing above the equilibrium. Uh, a minimum price is also known as a price floor, where the price in the market cannot fall below it, so it's the lowest price that the price in the market can be. Let's take the wheat market as an example, and let's say a minimum price is imposed above the equilibrium price in the market to support the incomes of producers. And let's say that minimum price is set here, so that is um, the minimum price. And let's call that P min. Okay, so P min is set there. Let's analyze the impact it has on the market. Well, at a higher price now, supply has extended and demand has contracted. So demand has contracted to Q2, supply has extended to Q3, and straight away you'll see there's a big problem here. It makes sense that there is a greater incentive now to supply wheat with a high price, and it makes sense that demand is contracted because a higher price, why would you want to buy so much? So um, Straight away, supply is more than demand. There is going to be an excess supply problem here, uh, indicated by this triangle. The triangle tells us the total excess supply. Now, in a labour market, a minimum price can be set in terms of a minimum wage. The price of labour is just the wage. So if a minimum wage was set above the equilibrium, there would be an excess supply still, yes. And that excess supply in the labour market is unemployment. And classical economists argue that Unemployment caused by a minimum wage is a reason why a minimum wage should not be introduced. Also known as real wage unemployment and classical unemployment. A big argument free market economists make against a minimum wage. But anyway, back to the wheat example here. There is an excess supply with supply more than demand. Right. Let's now analyse the impacts on stakeholders, on government, on producers and consumers. Well, straight away, this excess supply is a problem that the government has caused. By the government intervening and setting a minimum price, this is a negative consequence, a problem. The government has to find a way of dealing with this. They can't just uh, uh, make producers deal with such an issue. Why should they? They're, they're not the ones who have set the minimum price. The government has. So if producers have to deal with the excess supply, they need to find a way of storing it or of dealing with it, which is deemed unfair. So the government will step in and they will buy up this excess supply. And that's known as intervention buying. intervention buying. And what the government do will do, they'll buy up the excess supply at the minimum price. So if we call this point A and this point B here, the government will buy up the difference between Q2 and Q3, which represents the excess supply, at the price P min. So the government will have to pay A, B, Q2, Q3 to actually buy up this excess supply. And then they have three options. Three options of what to do with the excess stock that they bought up. They can either store it themselves, but the problem with storing is that it's very, very expensive. Um, so they might not want to do that. They can either burn that stock, so if it's wheat, and they think, well, there's no point of storing it and uh, not having any value to it, just burn it and get rid of the storage costs involved. They could do that, but that's a massive waste. What a waste of resources, what a waste of money. And third option is to dump it. <laughs> and by dumping, I mean dump it abroad. Sell it in foreign markets at a lower price than P min, than the minimum price. The problem with that is that foreign countries will know what's going on, they'll realise that the price they're charging is less than the minimum price in the home country, and they'll be very unhappy with it, because it means that domestic wheat supplies abroad will not be able to compete, and it can cause all sorts of negative effects in the economy where the wheat is trying to be sold. So often the governments will not get away with dumping it either. So they're the three options, who knows what they do. Whatever they do though, there is going to be a substantial opportunity cost. substantial opportunity cost, because there is at least going to be a cost of buying up the excess stock. Then the government has to think, well, could that money have best been spent elsewhere instead of buying up intervention, uh, instead of buying up excess stock? Yes, there is a gain of setting a minimum price. You're protect protecting domestic producers. And there may be a value to the economy of domestic producers continuing to supply and continuing to exist, fair enough. But if the cost outweighs that benefit, maybe this wasn't a worthwhile intervention. Maybe that money should have been spent on education and healthcare. Maybe it should have been spent on building infrastructure, etc. 
Maybe that money has been taken away from other key areas of the economy. Maybe by spending money here, the government has to finance it by raising taxes in the future. Whatever, there is going to be an opportunity cost involved here for the government to make. Um, in the EU, this is actually seen a lot. So minimum prices are given to agricultural producers in the EU. Um, and the way that governments deal with the excess supply problem is that they make producers set aside land every year to make sure that they don't grow on that land, to make sure that basically the excess supply is not actually grown and produced. So instead of producing Q3, they only actually end up producing what they're going to sell, which is Q2. An interesting idea. Um, so that's one way they try and deal with excess supply in the real world. The temptation for governments is to just buy at P-min and then sell in the domestic economy below P-min to get rid of it. At least then they're earning some revenue. But the problem with that is they're breaking their own rules. If they then end up selling below price, the minimum price, what good is that? You know, you're selling a minimum price and you're breaking it yourself. So the temptation is to, to do that, but that's not actually allowed. So two issues there for the government. And the final issue they have to consider is popularity. So on the one hand, producers will love this because they gain a higher price and they gain higher incomes, higher revenues, but consumers will not like it because they have to pay higher prices. So let's kind of write that in there as well. So consumers pay higher prices, they don't like it, and that can impact on government popularity. You know, governments are vying for votes at the end of the day, so we need to consider that impact too. Producers though will like it, so their revenues increase from initially them earning P1, let's call that C, P1, C, Q1, 0, to now, with the government intervening and buying up all this uh, excess stock, they're actually getting P min, um, B, Q3, 0, to, so they're getting P min, B, Q3, and 0. So their revenues have increased from this little box down here, so now this huge extra box there, so producers are getting a great excess in revenue uh, as a result of it. Um, so that's great for them. So producers like it, they gain an increase in revenues, an increase in their own personal incomes, which is great. But consumers don't like the higher prices. Um, so that can have uh, potentially adverse effects on popularity. So that's the impact a minimum price has on a the market. There is one final thing I want to show on here, and that is that a minimum price also imposes a deadweight loss on society. If you, want to, if you want to understand why that deadweight loss is caused, watch my video on why a minimum price causes a deadweight loss. But society does lose out. There is a loss of consumer and producer service when a minimum price is uh, imposed on a market and uh, efficient outcomes are distorted. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.